to this. Let's start with this question. Okay, so what you have here is a picture of some different plant life cycles. What I want you to be able to do is have a look at the different life cycles and help me choose the answer which is best suited. So when you look at W, X, Y, and Z, you've got different stages of the growth of a plant. Which of these statements is correct? The plant bean is able to make its own food at stage Z. The plant bean starts to develop true leaves at W. The, plant, the bean plant needs air, light, and water at stages W, X, Y, and Z. The seed leaves provide food for the seedling at stages X, Y, and Z. So which answer is best suited and most correct? Who have we got? Uh, Dino. I think number three. Number three. So number three is the bean plant needs air, light, and water at stages W, X, Y, and Z. Why do you think that's correct? Because every plant needs air, light, and water. Okay. Um, uh, under the ground. Under the ground. So if something is under the ground, do you think it's going to get that much? No. No, not really, right? So, do you know I'm going to say no? I get, I understand why you would think that. It makes a lot of sense, but uh, it's actually not the right answer. Mr. Snow. Yes. What? What do you think the right answer is? No. Hermione, what, what do you think? Why um, one? Because um, the uh, plants, the bean plants, need leaves to make uh, its own food, and at um, stage Z, then the uh, bean plants um, have leaves already. Yeah. Okay, I would agree with you. Its own food at stage Z. Yes. Um, so here we have W, X, Y, and Z. W, the bean plant is still underground. At X, we see some roots, and we see the bean plant go a little bit above ground, but it doesn't have any leaves yet. At Y, we're starting to see a stem, and we're starting to see the growth of some leaves, but at the same time, there's still no leaves being made. At Z, we have roots, we have a stem, and we have some leaves, okay? Well, not necessarily. We only need light, at stage Z because we've only got leaves then. Until then, the plant doesn't need light in order to make food. So the point of the seed is it contains everything that is needed for a plant to grow. In this situation, for W, X, and Y, we're still using the nutrients in the seed. The seed contains the nutrients in order to get the plant to stage Z when it can make its own food. Until then, we don't need it. W, once again, we don't really need air because the plant's underground. Only when it gets to X and Y do we start seeing the plant really needing air. The seed leaves provide food for the seedling at stages X, Y, and Z. Well, X and Y, there's no leaves. And the seed leaves, when do, leaves, when do seeds have leaves? Plants have leaves, not seeds. So again, what we need to do is need to look through each one of those answers and decide which one is best suited. So when you look at each answer, when you're ever looking at each answer inside any question you're ever given, always try to make sure you're choosing the one which is best suited. It does help keep the seats warm, but at the same time, what, does, what do plants use light for? It's not about keeping the seeds warm. The temperature of the sun is going to keep the seeds warm, but temperature more than light, okay? Temperature. Remember when we spoke about energy, right? We spoke about light energy and heat energy. Heat energy, fair enough, can come from the sun as well, but we're not necessarily talking about that in relation to the plant's growth. We're talking about how light is being used by the plant, okay? So they are different. Remember, they're slightly different. Um, so the answer, the one answer that makes complete sense there is number one, okay? The plant is able to make its own food at stage Z because it has leaves, the leaves are then able to absorb sunlight, 
sunlight which then makes food, okay? Two, two identical pots of salt, oh sorry, of soil, planted with the same chili seeds. A seed was planted in pot A and 20 seeds were planted in pot B a week. A week later, the seeds germinated and grew as shown below. So there's pot A with the one seed, pot B with 20 seeds. The height and thickness of the plants in both were measured and recorded. Which of the following most likely shows the height and thickness of the plants in each pot? So one, pot A, the height is 12 centimeters, and pot B, the height is five centimeters. Thickness, pot A is two, pot B is one. Two, height, pot A, 12, pot B, five, thickness, one and two. Three, five and 12, one and two. 5 and 12, 2 and 1, which one do you think is most likely to happen? And I'm going to add, remember, if you give me an answer, I'm going to ask you to explain to me why. Uh, uh, it is part, uh, it is number 3. Number 3, why do you think number 3? If, if it is the thickness of part A is 1, it can, uh, it can put in one chili seed. If uh, the thickness of pot B is two, it can uh, put in uh, many chili seeds. Okay. Two. Why two? Can you put out the window? It's two. Why two? Why number two? Number three. Why do you think it's number three? This pot is the his centimeter is lower. The plant is not in the part B is more than part A, so the his centimeter centimeter is more. Okay, uh, say no. I don't think that's the right answer. Uh, Monk is four. Four. Why four? I th I read the correct concept. It says plants that grow in overcrowded conditions have taller and thinner stems. The plant B, pot B has many chili seeds, the more chili seeds, and so they are taller and they are thinner. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, the correct concept down the bottom. The misconception is that when you think that plants grow on their own, you think that they're going to get more nutrients. And they are going to, you know, grow bigger and they're going to grow fatter. But no, the concept, it is plants that grow in, uh, oh, sorry, sorry, yeah, three is right. Sorry, one sec. He's coming over here. Oh, no, yeah, sorry, four is right. So plants that grow in overcrowded places. So when there's many, many plants, what you're going to do is you're going to get plants that are going to grow taller and they're gonna grow thinner. Why do you think that plants will grow taller and thinner in places where it is overcrowded? Jasmine, why do you think? It's because um, they have to uh, grow tall to take more sunlight from the others and they, well, uh, they have to share nutrients from the ground so they cannot grow thick. Yep. Remember, the plants, when they are in the same place, they are in competition with each other. Imagine I went into the classroom and I put a lot of candy in the classroom and I made you all stand against the wall and I said, run, get as much candy as you can. You're all going to run in, you're all going to go. And then there's going to be lots of people crying and then I'm going to feel really bad that I made you all run and try to get candy. Same thing happens for plants. What they're doing is they're in competition. They say, hold on, I want sunlight. Hey, you want sunlight too? You want sunlight too? Hmm. Right, I'm going to have to get bigger than you because I want sunlight. I want nutrients. If I'm going to grow big and I'm going to go tall, I need to get nutrients from the ground. But they can't grow fat because we have to share these nutrients. So they're going to be skinnier and thinnier, right? Same point is to think about this is that if I had one chicken, and I brought in a chicken for the whole class and everyone has to get to eat a little bit of chicken, you're not going to eat that much chicken. Whereas if you're on your own and you eat all the chicken on your own, 
you're going to get big and fat, right? So think about sharing nutrients and also trying to get to the highest height. Uh, well done, Jasmine. That was a really good answer. Uh, number 20. The diagram below shows the flowers of... Oh. Um, it's three. Three. Why is it three? First, I read C. And it says there's no need for pollination to take place in plant A because it has both the male and female flowers in it. It's impossible, so I wiped. Uh, so I, it is the so two and four are not correct because they have C. Okay. And I look at A and B, which one is correct? And only the female flower on plant X or plant X will develop in fruit. And I saw and I see at plant Y, it also has an ovary, and it can develop into a fruit. So I also wiped out the first one, and it's three. Nunky, that is a really, really, really smart way to do that question. He looked at C first. There is no need for pollination to take place in plant X because it has the both male and female flowers on it. But remember, you need male part and female parts to touch. This pollen needs to go from the male part to the female part in order for pollination to occur. So as Monkey said, that's impossible. If we have flowers like this, you're not seeing cones, you're not seeing spores, they're flowers. Flowers need to pollinate. What do you think the way that those two parts are going to pollinate? Do you think they need a pollinator or do you think they need something else? Plan X. I hear you, Rosie. How do you think plant X pollinates? When? Yeah. Because the, the female and male parts aren't close together, like plant E. Yeah, okay, good job. And uh, what other types of plants or structures do we see use wind to pollinate? So we know that A is not true. So look at question one, A and B only. Well, that's got A in the answer, so that's gone. So one, two, and four in the answers are not correct. So you can tick them off, make them go away, and that way you only get three as your answer. So as I said before, good job, Monkey. That was really good logic, logic, power of deduction, Sherlock Holmes-esque way to find out what the answer is. Good way of going about things. Okay, let's try the next one. The diagram shows the stages of growth in a plant. So fruit to seed, seed to seedling, seedling to adult plant, adult plant to flower, and flower back to fruit. That is the plant life cycle. So uh, which of the arrows correctly represent germination and fertilization? So um, to explain, okay, so is the growth from a seedling. I don't think that's not something that we have directly covered in our classes. So if you were to look at question one, two, three, and four, which ones correctly show, which arrows show germination and fertilization? So remember, germination is when the seed grows and fertilization is when the male parts fuse to form something, to form a seed. Four. Four. Why, why do you think it's four? Because the seed kind of germinates into the seedling. The seedling grows into an adult plant and the flower makes the seed yep. in the fruit. Yeah, good job. So, as Sky said, the germination is when the seed grows into the seedling. That is when it is growing. And that we have fertilization from when the flower, the reproductive part, then creates the fruit. The fruit contains the seeds. So that's when we have the fertilization aspect occur. Okay, 20, ah, 23. The table shows the characteristics of three flowers, A, B, and C. This is flower A, this is flower B, and flower C. So the color of the petals is red, white, white. Size of the petals, small, big, and small. Scent of flower, unscented, unscented, and scented. Scent means smell, okay? So if you were to say 
uh, that has a nice scent, that has a nice smell, that has a horrible scent, that has a bad smell. So unscented means there is no smell. Which of the following describes how each flower, oh dear, okay, one sec, I need to exit this because it's not good. Bill, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, yeah. Whilst well, we're there, Bill, tell me, what do you think the answer is? Do you think it's wind, animals, 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 why wind? Animals by wind, animals. Wind, wind, animals. Why, uh, number two. Number two, why number two? One second. Uh, Lily, you've been very quiet today. Lily, what do you think? Ming Chou, what do you think? What do you think the answer is? And what do you think? I think it's number. I think it's number. Number one. Number one. Why number one? Because the for ice is red and small, so that is the wind can easy to uh to get is it away. Okay, so let me ask you a question. So, if a flower is small, yes. What do you think the lead, What do you think the petals are going to be like? So, the petals. Remember, they're going to be probably going to be like this, right? Let me yes. see. Them. So, you think the wind is going to be able to blow the pollen from something that's small and has closed leaves? No. No, I don't think so. So, let's try. P, you've been very quiet today. P. What do you think? Um, think. Um, I think it's numbers one and two. One and two. Uh, I would disagree with you. Uh, we've only got one minute left. I'm in number one. Number one. Number one. I think number two. Number two. Why number two? Because if it is small, I, don't, I think number three, because if it is small, only animals could reach it and take the pollen. Yes. And if it is the wind can blow the pollen away. Yeah. Okay, so I would, I would say it's number three for this reason. The color of the petal is red. We said that petals are there to attract insects with different colors, right? So they're going to come there. White, it's big. Not that much color, it's unscented, the petals are big. It's gonna let the, uh, let the wind blow away and see, there's a scent, it smells, right? We said that scented, plant, scented flowers are gonna encourage uh, animals to come to it and smell and eat the food. So I would say it's three animals.